We are officially one twelfth of the way through 2022. And in January, I watched a total of 26 motion pictures. We're gonna rank all of them from worst to best on this episode of Your Everyday Nerd. But where, where's the yin shelf? What's going on? Are you an everyday nerd? Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss the next episode. Yo, welcome back to Your Everyday Nerd. I'm your host, Zach Snyder. If you're new around here on Yin, we pull from every corner of nerd culture, talk about anything and everything that piques my interest. I know what you're thinking, Zach, why the hell are you not in front of the yin shelf? What is this nonsense? How can you make a video without a Funko Pop? And the answer is all of my main videos are gonna be there, but this is a different video. We're doing something new today. We're gonna be ranking and reviewing all 26, that's right, 26 motion pictures that I watched in the month of January, 2022. Number 26, The Amazing Spider-Man. Now I'm currently working on an hour long Spider-Man video. We're talking about all 11 theatrically released Spider-Man movies. A few of them are on this list because I watched them in January. So I'm not gonna go into full depth on a lot of these movies, but I will say The Amazing Spider-Man is, it's ass. I don't like this movie. I find it to be very, very boring. I find there to be a bit of potential and then they squander it by involving like nonsense conspiracy plots and stupid out of character Peter Parker moments. Again, I'll talk about that in full detail when you check out my Spider-Man video by the end of March. Number 25, The Incredible Hulk. I, I, I'm, I'm rewatching the MCU, I know. I've never felt that much shame in a video than by saying I'm rewatching the MCU, but I am. And yes, The Incredible Hulk is, it's the worst phase one movie. The direction is pretty solid and I like Edward Norton, but story is not as exciting as I would like it to be. But like, I don't need to tell you why The Incredible Hulk is bad. Most people just don't like it anyways. Number 24. Thor. This one's a weird one. I'm going to be honest with you. Thor went down on this rewatch a lot. I really, really do not like this movie. I find it to be painfully unfunny. I hate every one of these human characters. Thor is not a funny individual. He goes from being a bad guy to being a good guy really quickly because he met Natalie Portman. Also, Kenneth Branagh just be putting Dutch angles every two minutes. I hate this movie. Let's move on. Number 23, Iron Man 2. I have seen Iron Man 2 like seven times and I have no idea how that happened but I have and every single time it gets worse and worse and worse now don't get me wrong there's good moments in this movie plenty of funny quirky Tony Stark dialogue when he pisses in his suit in front of everybody at the party I do laugh but then you have an awful villain and the movie's trying to do like 12 different plots and never really does any of them well if I could go the rest of my life without seeing Iron Man 2 again I would be a much happier person number 22 scream 3 the new Scream movie just released, and I had not seen any of the previous ones. I have seen all of them, though, including the new one. We'll talk about that one later. Scream 3 is the worst of the bunch. They really start getting into like some Scooby-Doo mystery bullshit, and the main cast is pretty forgettable. I like the Scream franchise because every single movie does actually have an overarching plot. A lot of these old horror franchises do so many reboots that it's hard to keep track of everything, but Scream does a pretty good job of keeping continuity. Scream 3 works in that context. It's not awful, but it's definitely the worst of the bunch. Number 21, Venom. It's not really good. Like it's got a very boring plot. It's way too long. The villain is bad. What is this CGI? But I absolutely love all the Eddie Brock and Venom conversations. They're really, really funny. Venom 2 does everything better, but like the first Venom, it can be fun a little bit. It's just also got some problems. Number 20, think Spider-Man 2. I promise. I have watched some good movies this month, but like I said, we're doing the Spider-Man video, so I had to rewatch this movie. And you know what? I used to say it was the worst one of the bunch. Now it's actually kind of funny in some aspects. It's kind of epic in other aspects, but I do have some very glaring big problems. And that's why it's still so low on this list. Number 19, Spider-Man 3. Oh boy, man, the Raimi trilogy. It's like really good. And then it gets into great. And then it gets, even better, Spider-Man 3, man, like what can you say about it? It's so funny. Every scene in this movie is almost laugh out loud hilarious. I absolutely recommend seeing Spider-Man 3 as a comedy. You'll be a better person for it. 
I promise. Number 18, the worst person in the world. This is gonna be a controversial take. I like this movie, but I did not love this movie. This is an indie film that's been really well received and I went into it highly expecting it to be amazing and I loved that first hour. I was really getting into the characters. I was getting into the relationships. But then the middle of the film just did like this really wacky, bizarre sequence that while cool on paper, and in any other movie, I would have absolutely loved it. It took me out of the film and towards the end, something happens to a character and I'm surprised to care about him and yet I ended up not caring about that character at all. I definitely want to rewatch this movie in the future and I will talk about it fully in depth when we get to our Oscar 2022 video but in the meantime I just thought it was this potential. Number 17 Scream 2. Spoiler alert, Scream, the first one, is the best out of the first four. Scream 2 is almost as good as the first one, but then it has this kind of weird twist and everything falls apart. I mentioned that Scream 3 was the worst one. Scream 2 is better than that one for sure, but yeah, I don't know what they were thinking for that ending. I really, really don't. Number 16, The Avengers. Our Marvel marathon continues. The Avengers is good. We've just seen more epic stuff now, you know? Infinity War, leagues above it. Endgame, also leagues above it. We're gonna have this new Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness movie and I'm willing to bet it'll be a lot better than The Avengers. I hope so, please don't be bad, please don't be bad. There's a lot to love in this movie. I love the big panning comic book shots. I love all the character interactions. This movie, for as much as it has to accomplish, is still way too bloated. There's a lot of bad Joss Whedon dialogue. I can talk about this for days, but we'll leave that for another video. Number 15, Scream 4. Scream 4 is the best movie of the franchise did it in the first one and that also isn't the fifth one. Scream 4 is good. I like the new characters. It's kind of disappointing that we're not going to get more of those in the future. I like what the franchise has done. It's continued to get more and more meta. Easily the best one since the first one and also the fifth one but we'll talk about that later. Number 14, Someone Great. A couple of years ago, I started working on a video where I was watching every single film and TV show that actor Lakeith Stanfield starred in. He's easily one of my favorite actors working today. Well, this is one of those movies that I hadn't gotten around to. And so I finally watched it and it's a Netflix rom-com. And you know what? It's actually pretty good. I was a little surprised that there wasn't that much Lakeith in it. So that was disappointing, but it's an interesting entry in the rom-com genre in that it takes place Place after the breakup happened and there's no getting back together. Instead, we see our lead actress try to get over this breakup. We see her interacting with her friends and it's all about moving on and going forward in her life. And I like that a lot. There's some cringy millennial humor that I'm not a big fan of. If I have to hear another Harry Potter joke in a movie, I swear, I might just have to. Number 13, Scream. The very first Scream movie also surpassed my expectations. It's not like the best film in the world, you know, there's still problems with it. Even though it started a lot of the tropes in the horror genre, it still feels dated. It's just because it's 26 years old. It makes sense. But I like all these main characters. They're easily the most memorable in the franchise. And that's why we continue to see those characters throughout the next four films. I do like Scream 5 more than this, but I watched that in February, so I can't count it here. Number 12, Spider-Man Homecoming. Another MCU movie, another Spider-Man movie. Another one. Homecoming's pretty good. It's not aged as well as I would like it to. Some of the humor is cringy. I like other Spider-Man movies more than this, but as the first MCU Spider-Man is pretty epic. I'll talk about this more soon. Number 11, Captain America, the first Avenger. This one surprised me. Out of all of the phase one MCU films, I did not expect to like this one as much as I did this time. The first Avenger is just a really good origin story. If you like a film like Sam Raimi's Spider-Man, you're probably gonna like Captain America the First Avenger a good bit. It falls apart in the third act. I'm not a big fan of the Red Skull. I think Bucky could have used a little bit more character work. But other than that, Steve is such a great protagonist. I love seeing his character arc and that ending, man. When that final shot, fantastic. Number 10, Iron Man. It's still the best phase one film. I love Tony Stark's character. Lots of great jokes here. It also falls apart towards the ending of it, but it's like only the last 15 minutes. I don't like Obadiah Stane. Nobody cares about the Iron Monger. But everything before that, pretty good superhero movie. Number nine, Venom, Let There Be Carnage. Venom, Let There Be Carnage is the best movie ever made. No, I'm not being held hostage. I genuinely believe it's the best movie.
This movie cinema, if you go into it expecting an hour and a half of comedy, you're gonna love this movie. I want more movies like this, especially in the superhero genre. It's literally just Eddie Brock and Venom breaking up in their relationship. It's hilarious. Number eight, Spider-Man Far From Home. The sequel to Homecoming, Far From Home is also pretty good. Again, this one's gone down a little bit on my rewatch now. I used to give it a 10 out of 10. Right quite a 10 out of 10. There's some questionable choices. Peter almost drone striking a bunch of kids. That's weird. I don't like the shield nonsense. The fact that Nick Fury is a scroll. I'll complain about that later. Anyways, pretty good Spider-Man movie. Not the best, but still pretty good. Number seven, The Adventures of Elmo and Grouchland. This is my first movie of the year. I watched it after midnight on a Discord call with my good buddy Aiden Matthews. I have mad nostalgia of this film from when I was a kid and I've always loved Elmo. It's such a good children's film. Every single element of this film works really, really well. Some of the cast members were literally on Broadway. Elmo learns to share with his friends. Just a powerful work of cinema. I'm not even joking. It's a fantastic film for what it is. Number six, Fargo. I mean, I guess it's better, like slightly better than Elmo Adventures in Grouchland. Uh, <laughs> Fargo, directed by the Coen brothers. Pretty epic 90s film. I'm a big fan of movies like this that make you anxious the whole time, wondering what's going to happen next. Where's the characters going to go? And then, boom, the character gets what's coming to him. Great film. Everybody loves Fargo. There's nothing new I could say right now. Maybe I'll talk about it more in the future. Number five, The Tragedy of Macbeth. I'll keep this one short because I'm sure nobody wants to hear me talk about Shakespeare for 12 minutes yet. Got to do a Shakespeare video in the future, for real, for real. The Tragedy of Macbeth is probably the best Macbeth adaptation put to film. And I don't know this for certain because I haven't seen a whole bunch of other ones, but like, this is fantastic. I love the artificial sets. I loved all the acting. Denzel Washington, Francis McDormand, both do a fantastic job. And then they have the three witches portrayed by this one actress, and it's brilliant. She gives such a fascinating and terrifying performance that I'm like, why wasn't this done? sooner. This film got nominated for a couple of Oscars, so I'll talk about it more in the future. But for now, I'd say if you're into Shakespeare, definitely check it out. Number four, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. It's a great movie. What else do you want me to say? I'm going to complain about it a little bit in my Spider-Man video because like I'm not a big fan of Kingpin. I don't think the humor is as good as it could be. The story isn't as engrossing as I would like it to be for future rewatches. But like this is a literal piece of art. Everybody loves this movie. I love this movie. I just have a couple of nitpicks with it. Number three, The Master. A Paul Thomas Anderson joint. The Master is a really, really intriguing film that I need to rewatch in order to understand completely. It's about this guy played by Joaquin Phoenix, who uh, he's drunk one day, stumbles onto a boat, meets this guy that's called the master. He just so happens to be head of a cult. Now, what that cult is, how they function. I'm not going to go into specifics because I don't quite understand it, but we get some very fascinating interactions between these two characters. Some of the dialogue is just so rich that like I was blown away by what they were saying because I didn't understand all of it, but I understood enough of it to be like very into it. Number two, Shiva Baby. So there's a movie called Uncut Gems that came out a couple of years ago. I really like this movie. I think it's a really epic film. Shiva Baby is like that, but like toned down a little bit to be a bit more relatable. If Adam Sandler and Uncut Gems was like gambling away millions of dollars, the protagonist in Shiva Baby is trying to navigate a family funeral. So as you can imagine, it's a little bit more scary. This film does that thing like Fargo and Uncut Gems where you're anxious the entire time. You're not quite sure where it's gonna go. And then the ending, well, some people would say it wasn't climactic enough. I kind of like the anti-climactic aspect of it. I won't go into depth, of course. I don't want to spoil it. Definitely go check this out if you're looking for some kind of catharsis and dealing with family drama. Number one, The Fallout. My first 2022 film of the year is a really, really interesting film about a school shooting. This is one of the most real depictions of being a teenager I've seen in a while. These characters are dealing with a very traumatic experience and you see the main character go to therapy and you see her dealing with this with her friends. You see how she distances herself from her sister and it's just some of the most wholesome and heartbreaking dialogue in a film I've seen in a while. Beautifully well done film. Absolutely recommend it. Go check it out. But anyways, that's all Tell Me Out for today. If you liked the video, give it a like. Let me know down in the comments what films did you watch in January 2022. I'd love to hear it. Hopefully you got some new recommendations here. I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.